transform us from the inside out. So if that's you, if you'll stand with me for just a moment, we're going to open up this service the right way. And I'm going to ask you to do something. It may be a simple act of obedience. I was talking with my brother Phil just a few moments ago from C3. Your simple act of obedience tonight in worship might be the icebreaker that breaks the whole thing open. Come on, somebody. You may have never jumped before in church. If God says jump during worship, I bet you better get off your toes. You, I'm telling you, your jump might be the freedom somebody next to you needs. It may be as simple as, as lifting up your hands. I don't know what it looks like for you, but I dare you tonight. I challenge you to worship God, to praise Him, to give Him glory like you never have before. And let's just see what God does. So as if you're in the room right now, in this simple act of obedience, if you'll just raise your hands all over this room. Here we are, Lord. We are gathered in this place. We've come from some of us here locally, some of us from different counties. But we're here, we're gathered in one place, in one mind, in one accord. And that is to see you lifted up, to see you exalted in this house. We pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would rest in this room and that you would receive our worship, that you would take our praise and you would return it, Lord, in the way that you see fit. We are excited. We want to hear what you're going to do tonight. We want to see what you're going to do tonight. I thank you that miracles, signs, and wonders are already beginning to happen even during worship. I speak right now and prophesy that even during worship, people are going to be healed. People are going to be set free. There's going to be salvation in the house tonight. We thank you, God, that you're going to show up and do what only you can do. So we lift our hands as a sacrifice of praise and we say, here we are, Lord. Here we are. Take all of us as we give you all that we are, all that we know. We surrender to you tonight in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody gets a hand clap of the praise and say amen. was here last night. Can you give me a hint? Let me do a little wave so I can see. If I put up there, how many, was, how many was not here last night? Put your hands, please. Yeah, so, so many of you guys. It's going to be awesome. Listen to me. We're not going to have to. Hey, guys, we're here last night. I got good news for you. You don't have to sit there and catch up because that's not the way God is. We can all just jump in the river together. Is anybody excited about jumping in the river together? and see what Jesus wants to do. How many has a testimony? It could be as simple as you are in addiction like Brian, or you're a rebellious church brat like Nathan. No matter what side of the fence you came on, we're in the same family. Lift your hands one more time so I can try to see the lights. That's what they say. I want you to look at somebody beside you and say, you know what? It might get a little bit crazy here because I'm going to give him what he's worthy of. There's an old time song that says, You don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. I want you to look at somebody else and sit and say, You don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. So give me some elbow room, because I'm about to give you what he's worthy of, and I need a little bit of space. Come on, give God a hand clap.
sangre, tu sangre, preciosa sangre, beautiful blood, precious blood, Jesus, precioso, hermoso, maravilloso, Jesús, Jesús, Jesús. all over the room is the chance. He's going to go vertical for a little bit. I thought we just stay on it. Oh, but there's nothing but the king. Oh, but there's something with the front of God. There's something with the front of Jesus. There's something.
know them. So when something hits you and it's confirmation, it hits you, you're like, man, that sounds familiar. It hits you and you're like, man, I think, man, man him and Todd must have been talking. We haven't been talking. There's one Holy Spirit. He's not the author of confusion. And he knows what we need to hear in this room. With that, I'm going to open up one of the nurseries, zero to four years old. And then I want to do this disclosure at 9 p.m. Please honor the nursery workers. Pick up your kids at 9 p.m. At 9.01, we start selling them off to loving families. Thank you. 
say yes. You may be seated. Glad to see you, as Pastor Todd said. I live in uh, Mobile, Alabama, and uh, it's a little warmer there than it is here. But I am enjoying the chilly weather, to be honest with you. And uh, so we bring you greetings from Mobile, and uh, bring you greetings from my son, six-year-old son, who hates when I leave him. He's mad at y'all. He's mad at y'all because I'm here with you instead of being there with him tonight, laying him down for bed. And uh, he told me when I let him FaceTime him today, he was with his mama and his two sisters. And they were in uh, some store like Ulta or Sephora or something like that. And uh, he said, Dad, I want to burn this store down. I said, yes, you do, son. That's right. He said, you can't leave any more, Dad, for 20,000 months. I said, okay, buddy. So, y'all got to be nice to me tonight. I said, y'all got to be nice to me tonight. I came all the way here to see y'all. sing this here? Oh, you do? Well, then we'll do it better than them. Finished. 
bull and finally set free, set free for me. And I want to go ankle deep. Come on, lift your voice and say,
So, Father, I thank you for unsinkling hearts in this world. But in heaven, in heaven, in heaven, in heaven, in heaven. I just come alongside what Todd was saying about healing. Maybe some of you are dealing with healing in your, you need healing in your body because there's bitterness in your heart. I just declare in this room tonight that the Lord is going to unsink your heart tonight. Forgiveness is going to flow like rivers in you. Hallelujah. 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 Just one more time. Losing myself. Losing my relationship. Thank you. 
13, verse 1, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You or you appear, yes. He said, I don't like turning, though, because I'm, I have a little bit of a pause on my camera. Todd, are you bearing witness in, in the spirit? And, oh! Thank you. And I usually have my hand shaped like Todd, but my wife and kids, my two younger kids, my, my, my middle girl is eight, she'll be nine in July. My baby boy is six, she'll be seven. to be sent from one realm into another realm to make the realm you went 
into look like the realm you came from. And there is a there is a design of God to actually take us and allow us to colonize where he has planted us, not escape where he has planted us. And so now they are, they are about to step into everything that God has planned for them. This is the reason they have left Exodus. I mean, they have left Egypt. This is the reason they begin to take their Exodus from that land. They are stepping into the full release of God's power and promise in their life. And they say, let's go look at what God has for us. I'm probably not going where you think I'm going. Let's just take a little journey. Y'all want to? Ain't nothing to eat in this town, no way. Y'all ain't got nowhere to go. And they, they step out, and now they bring, you can put that verse back up there, Bubba, just stay with me, just leave it up there. When I pause, just leave, leave it up there, and then I'll just start back from where I'm at. He don't even go where he's Oh, yes, he does. Is it the right one? Yeah, go back to 26 for me. Go back one. And here they come back to Moses here and all the congregation children of Grand and Canadian. They brought back word to them and tell the congregation. And they show them the fruit of the land. And they say, this is, this is what we will taste in the place God has designed for us to possess and inhabit. And they told him, you go to the next verse, sir. They told him and said, we went to the land where you sent us. And it is, it is, it is what God said it was. It is what God said it was. It is a land that flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of that land. Nevertheless, nevertheless, oh, don't you love people like this? Nevertheless, the people... cycles simply because they create them with their own words. But this is off topic, but complaining is a powerful thing. It's funny to read through the Old Testament passages and watch God's people being completely taken care of, completely satisfied, completely fed. Their shoes did not wear out. Their clothes did not wear out. They walked through and they didn't, they didn't even have to work for anything. See, this is one reason people don't love promise. Because in promise there comes work in wilderness you just follow. People actually love wilderness because God provides it all and you have to do nothing. And they're, they're complaining, oh man, you, you, you read through these passages, if you would read something like, and the Lord heard their words. And the Lord heard their words. And the Lord's anger was to them. Because they could not, I feel like I'm touching this, but that's what complaining is about. We'll get you fixed for it. And here we go again. We have this, this, this piece of God's people that no matter how good it may be, there has to be something to complain about. And they stand up and go, we, we know, we know, listen, this is true. This is true. This is true. The land flows with milk and honey. There's grapes there. It's amazing what God has for us. But there's also great difficulty there. And Caleb stands up. Caleb stands up and he quiets the people before Moses and he says, he says, stop talking about what we cannot do. Stop talking about what we cannot do. And he stands up and he says, let us go up at once. Oh, he understands the power of moments. Let us go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome. There's a, there's a spirit of faith arising inside of Caleb 
in the middle of looking at giants and in the middle of looking at fortified cities and in the middle of looking at difficulty, something is different inside of his spirit. Something rises up on the inside of him. When other people want to bow, Caleb stands up and says, I don't care what anything looks like. We can do what God said we can do. I don't care how difficult it is. I don't care how difficult the, the journey may be. I don't care how strong the enemy looks in the land that God has promised us. We have God's word on the matter. There is something, there is something that arises in, in the spirits of Caleb. Something that arises in the spirits of Caleb to stand and say, Lord, I don't care what it looks like. I, I pray I can shake a few Caleb's loose in this room. Somebody clap for them. There's nothing I did to do that. That happens to everyone. We all you're, you're doing a good job. For 20 years, I, 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 I've, uh, I've done what I'm doing now. It's, it's fascinating all the journeys and places God's put me and people God's put me with and around. And all men I've been in all kinds of revivals. It's fascinating. I've seen powerful intercession, powerful prayer, powerful worship, passion. Up 
depressed is because you don't have God's perspective. You don't need deliverance. You need elevation. Because if you get higher, you see things different. The mountain you think is big right now, if you just get a little higher, it ain't that big. I flew on a plane today. I was driving over, flying over some places. And those little cities don't look too big when you're 30,000 feet above. Doesn't mean it's their size is any difference. It's just the perspective shift. Perspective shifts. The perspective shifts. And so Caleb is now in the room. And this is why they say, they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they spied out, saying, The land to which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Here we saw giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And we were in their sight. You have Caleb and you have Joshua, two men, two men with a different perspective. Same exact situation, different perspective. You you have to hear that. Same exact situation. Ten saw it one way. That's five. Ten saw it one way. Two saw it another way. And they were looking at the same thing. They're looking at the same thing. And two see it one way. Ten see it another way. One ten because they don't have God's perspective. Two because they do. And they've allowed God's perspective to get so deep on the inside of them that it comes out of their mouth and they begin to say, we can do anything God has called us to do. You can take this city. That's what I thought I would do this. You can take this city. You can take this city. I feel strength in this room now after coming out. I feel strength building in this room. Said, you can take this city. You can take this city. You can take this city. Why, why, why can't you believe for 10% of the people of Marion, just a tithe of the people of Marion, to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost in this church right now? What's wrong, what's wrong with that? You don't have to do it in your generation. It can be, this, this kingdom thing's multi generational. Doesn't mean you have to do it, but we're going to see it. We're going to see it. We're going to see it.
the congregation went up there once they cried and they wept all that night and the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation and they said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, we would have rather stayed in bondage and been safe than be walking with God on an adventure of faith. We would have rather stayed Consequences that lead into 
I'll stand right here and keep saying what God said. I'll stand right here when things are not going well and the city is getting worse. I'll stand right here and keep saying revival is coming to Marion. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what the city council says. I don't care what the school board is doing. God says something is coming to this city.
standing here on my own. Being with him, I'm sitting here in the middle. Caleb! Caleb is standing here, and he's 85 years old. And he tells him, I follow the Lord. This is where he says, verse 8. Nevertheless, my brethren, my brethren, listen, listen. I want you to listen to this language. This is important. This is where I'm going to hang my hat just a minute. I'm going to let you. My brethren, nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me. Very important, that language. My brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly follow the Lord my God. Next verse. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot is trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever. Because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now behold, oh, y'all don't get this. And now behold, 40 and 85, 85 with gusto, man. 85 with juice. Come on. 85 with juice. 85 with swagger. Standing up saying, I know what God said to me. And now behold, it was God. Who kept me alive. Oh, hallelujah. As he has said, these 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the woods, and now here I am this day. I, 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 oh, I can see him standing up and saying it to him. Here I am this day. Go back to that verse for just a minute. Here I am this day, 85 years old. Woo! Next verse, please. And yet, I'm going to bear cross. And yet, I am as strong this day as on the day Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for Both for going out and for coming in. Stands here at 85. And he says, 
is Joshua. Joshua, it's time. 45 years after the cross, I want what God told me I can have. Joshua says, yes, sir. Now here's where I want to hang my hat this morning. I do realize that he had to wait 40 years because of the blood.
discouragement you have been through. You, you, some of you may have a right to that. I know what it's like to I know what it's like to even be a leader in your church or congregation. Man, you so full of faith, you you I mean you you believe you know. I mean I'm sure some of you have to I've had to walk up in those drug houses and people would look at me like that. I mean just yank them up. Yank them up. Don't don't do that. That was a sin. Just yank somebody up. Yank them up. You know how it is in here. You know what it's like to be and then people stare at me. I know what it's like to be caked up. And people stare at me like I was gonna beat them. You think that can happen in here? You think that can really happen in here? You think that can be here? You think that's the problem? You gotta stop. You gotta stop. You have to stop cursing your own your own inheritance with your mouth. You're cursing. You're cursing your own inheritance. And I know it's joking. We all do it. I understand. But there's a there's a there's a, there's a line that gets crossed. There's a line that gets crossed. Do you think God can turn a desk back to a to a to a beautiful God? I do. There's a line that gets crossed. Plus, you get to the Holy Spirit. Let's start telling you, don't say that about your sin. You drive through the place for sin. My, my, my little church, my, my little, my little church, I'm almost going to throw this out. My little church in North Carolina, that I've had to, our little city is ghosty. I used to have a phobia of your people. You walk in my little hotel, I tell you, and I'd walk around our little ghost town. I know, I know, some of y'all can believe this now. But I, I, would, I, would, I would walk in around the city all the time and just split up my room and say, I've probably told y'all this before. And uh, uh, I would tell them, I would tell them, don't pray, don't pray. We, we love to pray. Because it, it takes the onus off of us a little bit. And we can blame if God, it don't happen, God, well, I pray about it. I prayed about it, it didn't happen. to come right there. You gonna point at those places? You gonna say you, that's there's a restaurant gonna be right here and it's gonna be delicious. And I love it, but it's gonna be a mess. And it's gonna stay here for the next fifty years. There's gonna be a bank right there. I don't see God doing that. I don't know. So we do that for about two years. I woke up in our little city one day, downtown Ghost Town, one day. Son of Ghost Town right there. I said. Stands 85 at 85 years old, 
stays faithful to an unbelieving world. Because he says, even though they don't believe, they don't have to believe for God to accomplish his work to them. And I just feel, my brother, can you jump up and pray for these people? Hallelujah. Keep working, Claire. Randy, Tandy, Danny, Scott, his name? Brennan. Praise God. Powerful name. I felt like there were some Caleb's in this room tonight. With a with a promise from God. Beautiful people in America, this Holy Ghost filled world. 
best interest of you still.
thank you for the glory that we're experiencing right now. And I say more, Lord. I thank you that what we're experiencing in this room is going to build and build and build and build and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. This is where we made a mistake in Pentecost. It's all about that one service, that one moment. No, something's going to be built and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. So, Mary, and I speak to you, I just tell you to get ready. The sons of God are here. The sons of God are here. And the chaos that you're experiencing, Mary, is going to be turned back into order by the sons of God. You don't have to clap. You can just listen. You don't, you don't have to clap. Father, I thank you tonight. say this in this room, but I wouldn't lie to you, I promise, that the best days of this place are definitely in front of it. That sounds cliche. Well, you can hear it that way if you want to, but I mean what I'm saying. That the best days of this place are in front of it. Now, we'll go there, but we'll stop on that. So, Caleb, I just tell you to rise up. I want all of us to stand if we can. I'm going to pray for you one more time before I go. And I hope I get to see you in the morning again. Tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about your role in this, maybe. See what the Lord has to say to us. breaking 
to stand in the middle of unbelief and say, no, 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 no. We will see what God said. Come on, lift your hands and voices. I feel something on that. If you pray in the Spirit, come on, release that. Come on, just let worship flow out of your mouth right now. I've talked long enough. Come on. Come on, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 Come on, keep doing, come on, keep worshiping. I speak songs into this team. Song writing goes to a new level in this worship team. This worship team goes to a new level. Song writing, releasing the sound of this house. Come on, come on, we believe it, Lord. We believe it, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel faith rising in this room. Yeah, I feel. Some of you are beginning to believe it. You're beginning to believe. Never know this is going to happen. God's going to do this. And it's also for some of you, it'll take time. That's okay. Let God take you on the pace you're on. But let your heart open up to believe again. Come on. We're going to see this thing, man. We're going to see this thing, man. Come on, keep praying for just another minute. Something's happening when you lift your voice.
last thing I'm going to declare, as I said before, a hundred times. Lord, I'm going to pray over this people tonight. Let's just for just a minute. I'm going to pray over this people specifically tonight. Sweet sleep. The scripture says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. So I thank you that these people are entering into the rest of you.
if you're near somebody that has their hand up, I want you to just, uh, I want my Bethel family, I want you to go put your hands on their shoulders right now. We're going to do this one last act. We're going to honor them for joining us. We're going to honor them for coming and, and pressing into this atmosphere. So God, I just release, come on, quickly move. God, I just release over Center Chapel. I release over Converse Church of Christ. God, I release over every visiting church, God, from every visiting city, God, that you will, God, that you will move in their churches, God, that you will, God, with signs, wonders, and power, God, move in their buildings, God. We call their leadership, their pastors to catch on fire, their people to catch on fire, God, for them to know your love, for them to know your goodness, for them to know your kindness, God, that they can exit the system. God, and come alive to beloved identity. Come alive, God, to what you're doing on the earth. And so I speak over their churches to be revived. I speak over their churches to come alive, to encounter the goodness and the kindness of Jesus. And we speak, God, that your glory will be in their buildings. God, that you're filling their buildings, God, with the Spirit of God, with revival, God, with the Holy Ghost, God. I see people that don't believe in tongues speaking in tongues. God, I see people that don't believe in miracles seeing miracles, God, and you're going to change the way they believe because they're going to encounter you. So we release that now. We release that over them now. We release that. We release that over you to go home with fire burning in your belly. To go home with fire burning in your belly. And you don't need to preach you don't need to grab the microphone. You need to be illuminescent. You need to shine so bright. You need to let the glory of God so shine off of you that your pastors and your leaders and the congregation say, we want what you have encountered. So God, I'll release it over them. To go home, not in the spirit of rebellion, but to go home, God, in the spirit of hunger, to see a move of God. Where they're planted, God, we release that in the name of Jesus. We release that in the name of Jesus. Be ready for some type of an announcement of we're going to have of service law. And I just want you, if that's your heart, and you'll say, hey, I'm, I'll, I'll run with you. I want you to just go away with me. Like, all right, if we, if we, I'm, I'm just saying, if we hear the Holy Spirit say, Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we're supposed to meet together. How many all wrong with us? You raise your hand, but you ain't worked all day today. Right? And so we're just going to be, uh, uh, we're just going to be spirit wind. We're going to be fluid with this. And, and I want you to give as much grace to us as, as we sometimes give to you, because this is the thing that I can 